So come together So obviously a lot of times some of the animals here need help. They, they can't always get the help that they need because a lot of people don't understand reptile things. So this is why we're really lucky to have rescue groups that specialize in the reptiles that we all love, right? They can help them, give them homes that they really desperately need so that they can live healthy, happy lives, which is what we all want for our pets, right? So, who I've got here are two gentlemen today who represent two different reptile rescue groups that are local here in your area. So, if anybody really wanted to learn more about what reptile rescue groups do, I highly recommend you seek out these gentlemen today and talk to them all about what it is because it's really great stuff. And some of you might even want to get involved. I know that reptile rescue groups are always looking for help. And that could be in the way of donations, that could be in the way of volunteering, um, that could be in the way of giving up your old cages. There's a million ways you can help. So definitely make sure you find out everything that you can about helping local reptile rescue groups. So, all right, I'm gonna start over here with you because we've got some pretty, we've got a pretty exciting animal. Have you guys seen what's here today? I'm sure you're all a little bit curious about it too, right? So, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've got going on here? Um, I'm sorry, introduce yourself and your reptile group and let us let everyone know what we do. I am uh, Mark Ouellette. Uh, I uh, run the uh, Little Rescue uh, Reptile Group. <laughs> sorry guys, sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, little Rescue Reptile Group in uh, Toronto. Um, we're uh, primarily a turtle rescue, which is even more of a specialization than uh, uh, most reptile rescues. Uh, I have with me here today, this is Arthur. This is not how a turtle is supposed to look. His shell is all caved in, and this is due to uh, um, metabolic bone disease at its finest. This guy, uh, when he was growing up, he was given, wasn't given uh, calcium, wasn't given UV lights or anything like that. And we don't even know how old Arthur is because he was dumped in Lake Ontario. Somebody uh, was walking along the beach uh, last summer, found him, brought him to us, and uh, he's been with us since. His shell is uh, still pretty beat up, but he is getting better. Um, well, obviously, I think I, you made a really good point that that's not what a turtle is supposed to look like, right? Does everybody know what a normal turtle looks like? I'm sure you've all seen normal turtles. And this is a prime example of what can happen when an animal is not cared for properly. And it doesn't mean the animal will necessarily die if it gets the right amount of help at the right time. So it's a good thing that we have organizations like Little Rescue Group here to, to help us out with some of that. Yeah, that's right. Uh, to him, this is normal, so he's not in any pain or anything like that. He does swim a little odd because he's not as, as streamlined as, as a regular turtle. But um, other than that, he is as uh, healthy as he can be. Cool, very cool. Um, Gordon, why don't you tell us a little bit about your group and what you do here for us? Okay, thank you. Uh, my name's Gordon Perry. I represent the owner operator of GMP Reptile Rescue out of Peterborough, which is just about an hour and a half east of Toronto. Uh, we've been in operation since uh, 2002, so we've been around for a little while. Um, a lot like Mark. We're not fly by nights. We've, we've been around, we've done everything. Um, our organization is solely based, funded on by donations um, and by our volunteer work. Uh, as far as I'm aware of, um, we're the only rescue in Ontario that is taking in large and or aggressive species. Um, we have volunteers on staff that are versed in those types of animals, large burmese pythons, particularly pythons, um, large monitors, iguanas, um, which a lot of people think, you know, they think iguana, they see them in the pet store. Four to six inches, really kind of cute, until they're six feet, and males reach their breeding age maturity, and they get actually aggressive. So that's when they come to people like us. So like I said, we've been in business since 2002, um, and we're steadily expanding year after year after year. Um, we work with different SPCAs across Ontario, Kitchener, Waterloo, Montreal SPCA. And if anybody goes in with the SPCAs, they don't just deal with, with anybody, much like Mark. We, we both have an accreditation, but we, we are able to work with certain SPCAs across um, Ontario. So like I said, again, we're not just fly by nights. We, we've been around and we're always available at any point to help, to talk to, to advise. And we take animals in. Um, regardless of temperament, regardless of size, regardless of health. We don't point fingers, we don't 
trying to make people feel bad. Everybody has changes in life, and when their changes, they can't get the reptiles, that's when they come to us. Currently, we have about 90 reptiles in the rescue, and we're running, we're running about half capacity. So we've had a really good year. We've adopted it quite a few in the last year. It's done really well. Excellent. So a really important point is that you want to take these animals that need rescuing to somebody who actually knows what they're doing because that could be the difference between life and death in these situations. Now, you brought up a really important part of how is it that you guys are funded? I mean, we know that you guys do some really great work for animals. It's obviously not cheap. These animals require medical attention. They require food, supplies, caging. Where does the money for that come from? Uh, both of us really uh, rely on uh, uh, private donations and stuff like that. Now, our rescue is actually a, a registered charity. I know uh, Gord is working on that as well. Um, but uh, we take in uh, donations, uh, we ask for adoption fees and uh, sometimes surrender fees. Um, and uh, we do uh, online fundraisers for, uh, uh, we ask, you know, to help out with vet, vet, vet bills and stuff. And we have uh, some animals that come in that are in really rough shape. Right. Yeah, those fundraisers are obviously important for you guys because I'm assuming that's where you're going to get the majority of your money from. Yep. Because currently, like you said, we rely on, we rely on public donations. Um, adoption fees and big events like this where people will often come in and donate you know some of the money nothing's too small you know lose change in your pocket can make a world of difference what we are doing on a, on a larger scale is if you go on to gofundme.com we're registered there under GNPRR so GNP Reptile Rescue and we've set our goal at $2,500 a year we want to raise to redo uh, some enclosures upgrades to heating upgrades to our 1,300 square feet. We want to go bigger. We need probably closer to 1,800 square feet where we'd be a lot more comfortable. But to do that, we need the support. Right. So that support is very important for these rescue groups because they need to buy the supplies to keep the animals healthy. They need to buy the equipment to keep them going. And they also need to get veterinary care and housing, which is not always cheap, especially if you want to do it the right way. So it's very important if you're a reptile owner that you support your local reptile groups because your rest, local reptile rescue groups because they are an amazing resource for us. And in a time when there's a lot of legislation against reptile keepers, we want to show that we are responsible and we care about our animals. So gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. It's really important that everybody understands what is going on with our community and what resources we have in our community. Um, I want to just, if you guys don't mind, I'll just take a moment. I want to have a little bit of an Oprah moment here. Um, something we're really excited about. The Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo recognizes how important it is the work that you guys do specifically for these animals and representing us as a community. So on behalf of the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo um, and several other sponsors, we'd like to actually present you guys with some really cool stuff. Grant, would you mind coming up here and joining me, please? And uh, Fernando, come on up here a second. Everyone, please give it up for Grant Crossman from the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo. All right, we have here Fernando C. Now, these guys are here because they've got some pretty exciting news for you. On behalf of the Canadian Reptile Expo and PVC cages, we would like to offer you guys each one of these spectacular PVC cages to house your animals in. Um, I'm sure you can use that for any of the rescues you do, whether tortoises, turtles, lizards, monitors, boas. These cages are great for just about anything, so I'm sure you guys will put it to some really great use. But that's not all. We have more. Who wants to see more? We have a lot more. You guys ready? Okay. Because we had some really incredible vendors here at the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo. And not only are they just vendors, but they are pivotal parts of our community. They care a lot about these animals and they're showing it. They're putting the money where their mouth is in a sense. Because we have some really great, great donations here. Northern Gecko has provided you with some bags of Rapashi superfoods. Uh, the Gecko diet, and we also have some turtle diet food here as well. Everyone give it up for Northern Gecko! Aquarium Services has also generously donated some bags of substrate. So we have some lizard litter and we have some other um, aspen, it looks like, I'm no, sorry, aspen cypress mulch here. Um, really good stuff. Then we have Star Reptile has donated various products, um, including vitamins. And Zoomed has also stepped up and donated lighting as well as an amazing turtle filtration system. Um, 
Of course, Sport Credit has donated some snake hooks for you guys to use. So essentially, we've set you guys up with some really nice complete packages, including Exoterra, who's supplied us with some really cool lights, because you know you guys always need lights, um, as well as all kinds of other goodies in here, um, all kind of husbandry equipment. So guys, thank you very much for what we do on behalf of the Canadian Reptile Breeders Expo. Um, Congratulations, thank you so much. Um, I'd like to also just one second before you go on, and I totally want to hear from you guys on this because this is awesome, but I wanted to ask Grant to just let, tell us a few words about what it is and why these organizations are so important to us. Without choking anybody, of course. As a group of pet owners and people that are passionate, the vendors here at the Canadian Pet Expo acknowledge the efforts that individuals like Mark and Gord and their teams put together, and without them, we feel that a lot of the education that's responsible pet ownership funded would not be out there on a day-to-day -day basis. The vendors here, they put it out there as much as they can, but we need the support of groups like this that help those pets that sometimes run out of space, run out of homes. And thank you to Exoterra, ZooMed, PVC Cages, Northern, Gecko, Aquarium Services, Pork Credit Pets, and everybody for stepping up and supporting them. And congratulations and thank you. Without you, the hobby wouldn't be growing as strong as it is for us. I just wanted to say that as we're folding up here, <clears throat> we're choked up. Uh, it's reasons like this that give, like, at least for me, for Mark as well, I'm sure, the reason why we do this. We don't do it for the money. Because if we did it for the money, we, we'd be broke long ago. We do it for the love of the animals and to help the people who do enjoy the animals as much as we do. So, again, thank you, Grant, PBC Cages, Northern Gecko, and everyone else that supported us. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, do you want to say anything? We're going to put you on the spot, Mark. Do you want to say anything? Oh, yeah. We, uh, it's, it, just to echo what Doug Gork said, you know, we, uh, we're looking, we usually average around $15,000 a year worth of uh, uh, expenses and stuff like that for the animals. And uh, this, uh, this, this does go a long way. It's a really big thank you. So.